What's going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan Battle video. Welcome to the top 10 tanks of Dokkan Battle. Now before I say anything else, before we jump into the list itself, I want to make sure that you're all aware that every single shred of credit for all the information I provide in this video goes out to Mr. Mobile Man ASC from the Dokkan subreddit. He's the one that put in all of that hard work and did all of those calculations to bring us this list that made this video possible. I've been following his work for quite some time now and I really enjoyed the past lists he's done. And I think this one is just as awesome and I really feel like more people should be exposed to it which is why I'm here now on YouTube with this video for you guys and also as mobile man himself said on his post there's just so much emphasis on the hard hitters in this game all people seem to care about is how hard does this unit hit how much damage does this unit do and if they don't break a million or two million or whatever then they're trash but we really should have more love for the tanks of this game the characters that are responsible for keeping your team alive so that your hard hitters can do their thing and output massive amounts of damage. So today, we're bringing you the top 10 tanks of Dokkan Battle. But before we get started, I just want to say a few things to give you guys some context. So, number one, he defines tanks as units that reduce damage when attacks are aimed at it. So, units with mechanics that reduce the damage of their teammates and make the team entirely more tanky are not necessarily considered here. Number two, this isn't a list of overall defensive ability, so mechanics like healing, stunning, etc., while very useful, are also not factored into the rankings here. Number three, the primary mechanics that he does take into consideration for this list are 1. A high defensive stat, 2. Percentage-based damage reduction, and 3. Dodge chance. Number four, the scenario under which he tested each unit was modeled after a standard Dokkan boss fight with multiple phases. Now, he does into, go into far more detail about the testing conditions under which he tested each of these units to determine the ranking in his original post, which I'll provide a link to in the description down below if you guys are interested in you know all the different things that went into determining this list, all the calculations, all the nitty gritty things, you can go check it out and I really recommend that you do. But that's all I have to say today. Let's just let's just get it started, guys. I've talked for long enough. SSJ Future Gohan. Now, of course, he is not on Global yet, so this is exclusive to JP. But uh, let's see what Mobile Man has to say about him. So this is Physical Super Saiyan Future Gohan, and uh, his team that he was tested under was Future Saga, which provides him with a 170% defense buff. Of course, Future Gohan is the leader of that team, and uh, you're going to be running double lead, so that's going to be 170% times two. And in terms of his defensive utility, his average defense is 63,503. His average damage reduction is 20%. As as far as extra notes go, Super Saiyan Future Gohan has a stacking damage reduction that increases by 10% per turn, up to 50%. Although he places low on this list, Super Saiyan Future Gohan has the highest tanking potential in this game when his passive is maxed out. So. At his maximum potential, he can be the tankiest character in the entire game, but I, I guess under the conditions he was tested, it's not likely that he'll be able to reach his max potential, which is why he's number 10 on this list, which means he's extremely tanky, but there are 9 other units in this game that are more tanky than he is. Oh, also, by the way, this is a list of TUR characters. Okay, TUR characters, not including LRs, because LRs can be pretty broken, so we're not considering those. We're talking about TUR characters in this list. Just make sure you guys know that. Okay, and uh, what else does he say? The Future Saga team is considered to have an average of 70% HP, which gives Super Saiyan Future Gohan an average defense buff of 30%, and his average damage taken is, or his damage taken in general, is 735,000. 889 which is good enough to get him at number 10 on the list all right guys so that is number 10 super saiyan future gohan we're gonna move down now to number nine perfect cell specifically tech perfect cell surpassing all the team that he was tested on was resurrected warriors which also gives a 170 percent defense and that would be from int angel golden frieza of course double lead again his average defense is 86,758 versus 63,503 and his uh extra notes are big bad bosses is considered to have a 40 percent uptime for perfect cell that is based on an 80 percent activation rate for the link and the link being accessible for only half of perfect cell 
Cell's turns. Perfect Cell is considered to have the standard 6.5 orbs that is given to nukers. I'm sure he provides more information about why that is in the original post. So if you guys are interested in that, like I said, go check out the original post from Reddit in the description, in the description down below. And his damage taken is 708,630. All right, that's number nine. Number eight, we have number eight bracket teen. <laughs> Yo, I like what he did there. That's awesome. Okay, Baytine, Tech Baytine um, is in number eight. Very appropriate. Unlimited Android Assault. Her team is Universe 7 Representatives, which is a 177% defense from LR Goku and Frieza. Her average defense is going to be 93,801. And according to Mobile Man, Android 18 has the, high, has the honor of having the highest defense stat on this list with list which I was not aware of I knew this girl was good I knew she was like an amazing unit of course and I use her all the time but I had no idea that she was actually that good of a defensive unit so I'm actually learning things as I go through this list as well hope you guys are learning some stuff as well her incredibly high defense stat comes from a combination of her start of turn defense buff a nuking based defense buff and a super attack based defense buff so basically she will get um, defense from her super she will get defense from her uh, nuking passive and she also has Oh, she also gets defense just right off the bat, start of turn. So a lot of different factors playing into how playing into how high her defense stat is. Um, due to her orb changing ability, Android 18 is considered to get an average of 7.5 orbs, so she gets more orbs than your average nuker because she can change her own orbs as well. And her damage taken is 900 or 692,985. All right, moving right along, and this guy is a very well known tank in this game. Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. He is uh, considered to be on a pure Saiyans team, 170% defense buff. The SDR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, of course. There are multiple out there, so make, just making sure that you guys are aware this is the Super Saiyan, this is the SDR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. Warrior's true value, his defensive utility. So his average defense is not very high at all, 31,754. If you can see the stark difference between him and 18, it's like a 50,000, 60,000, 62,000 difference. So quite, quite low defense, but he has an average damage reduction of 64%. So SSJ3's Vegeta's, uh, Vegeta's passive is considered to have eight an 80% uptime. So the reason that it's not the full uh, damage reduction, which I believe he has a 80% damage reduction on his passive is because it's not like 100% uptime, right? It's not always gonna be active, but when it is active, he is an absolute monster of a tank, right? So it's considered to have an 80% uptime. When his passive is active, Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta takes almost no damage. His damage taken uh, stat shown, the damage taken stat shown below comes from his passive's 20% downtime. Okay, makes sense. So the reason that it's still, you know, a, a decent number, 630,803, is because you have to take into account the times when he doesn't have an active passive and he will be taking a good amount of damage in that case. But when his passive is active, this man's not taking damage. So there he is, number seven, SSJ3 Vegeta, STR. Number six, we have AGL transforming Goku, one of the most recent Dokkan fests on both JP and Global. Boiling power, you guys know how good of a tank this guy is if you manage to pull him, if you're lucky enough to pull him. And uh, he is considered to be on a pure Saiyans team as well, 170% defense. His average defense is 72,279. That in conjunction with his average damage reduction of 22.5% makes him a super tanky unit. Notes, interestingly, transforming Goku's defense stat remains almost identical throughout the fight and even though his passive defense buff decreases with each transformation. The reason for that is his permanent SA base defense buff. That's why his defense stat stays almost identical throughout the entire fight, even though he uh, gets a little bit less defense buff with each transformation. And his average or his damage taken overall is 543,315. And at number five, so that was number six, by the way, number six, at number five, we have a card that most likely will never make it to global just because of licensing things with heroes and all those, all that, you know, politics and all that stuff. So don't worry about that. But if you guys have him on JP, then you have one of the best tanks in the game. Super Saiyan 3 Trunks, AGL, Evolution of Combat. He is on a hybrid Saiyan's team, of course, 170% defense. Average defense is 76,000. 
560 and his average damage reduction is 27.5%. Note, Super Saiyan 3 Trunks has a 50% chance to block against all attacks. Blocking an attack is equivalent to a 55% reduction in damage, which is massive. That is a massive reduction. Thus, his average reduction is 27.5%. You're just taking 55% and dividing it by 2 for that 50% 50 chance. Alright, makes sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. And his damage taken is 505,040. All right, at number four, we have someone that should come as no surprise to most of you. Android 16 Tech, Android 16, new form and resolve. One of the best tanks in the game. I've been, I've been saying this for, for a while, and uh, obviously I was right because Mobile Man agrees with me. His team is Android's 130% def uh, defense. So the thing is, if he was on a team, if he had a category team that provided even more defense, like 170%, he might even be higher on this list. But unfortunately, the best defense buff you can get from a leader skill currently is 130% on an Android's team. And in terms of defense, wait a second. I just realized, actually. I, I, I realized that you can actually, can't you run um, a Android 21 lead? like a Majin 21 lead and get 150% defense. Okay, I'm not sure what's up with that, but he ran it on an Android team 130%, so we'll go with that for now. Anyways, that's besides the point. I'm not the math guy, he's the math guy. Average defense, 99,056. Average, average damage reduction, 27.5%. Android 16 has a 50% 50, 50 chance to block against all attacks. Blocking attack is equivalent to a 55% damage reduction. Thus, his average damage reduction is 27.5%. Alright, so uh, same thing, exact same thing as Super Saiyan 3 Trunks right there. Although he has access to a larger defense buff from the Resurrected Warriors leader skill, Android 16 tanks the best on the Android's team due to the fact that he can max out his passive defense buff there. Makes a lot of sense to me. He gets a defense buff for every single uh, Android category ally on his team, so when you're running a full Android team, he gets his max uh, defense potential. Damage taken, 370,080, which is a huge drop off from the last guy. Super Saiyan 3 trunk, Trunks took, at number 5, took 505,000, but Android 16, 307,000. So a huge drop off. This is like, you know, a, a big jump, big jump for number 5. At number 4, we have Super Janemba, guys. And this might come as a surprise to some of you because it is a bit of a surprise to me, I'm not going to lie. I did not expect Janemba to show up here, but of course, he is a great unit, and uh, I think, I feel like he's, he's a... 120 lead that doesn't get as much love as he really deserves. This is STR Super Janemba Evil Incursion. Of course, he's the 120% extreme STR lead. He is uh, tested on the movie bosses team that gives 150% defense. Of course, led by AGL Turtis, one of my favorite units in this game, but that's besides the point. Average defense is 35,256. Average damage reduction is 55%, and he has a dodge chance of 30%. So all those three things combined make him extremely, extremely tanky, extremely good for taking reduced damage, of course. Notes, Janemba block, blacks, <laughs> blocks, I'm pretty sure well, that's what he means, he means blocks, Janemba blocks all incoming attacks, which is equivalent to 55% reduction in damage against an otherwise neutral attack, and his damage reduction is 300,379, so he's not a huge, like, he's not greatly more tanky than Android 16, but he is still more tanky, which is why he's number 3, and the last two we have, number 2, Super Janemba int Super Janemba. Now this is really a surprise because STR Super Janemba came after. He is like the updated version of int Janemba, right? But no, as far as tankiness goes, int Janemba is actually higher on the list. So let's see what this is all about. Team movie bosses, 150% defense. Average defense is 42,105, which is higher than STR Janemba. He gets a 55% damage reduction because of his ability to block all incoming attacks. And uh, let's see what else is going on here. Janemba is able to tank ever so slightly better than his STR counterpart due to his minor defense buff and a 5% chance to dodge that he gains from his int typing. Okay, so even though he has a lower chance to dodge, he gets that 5% just from the free dupe system, which is considered, uh, for all these units, they're considered to be at the free dupe level. And uh, so he does have that 5% chance just being an int type unit and he also has more defense. So I believe it's the difference in the average defense that allows him to be ever so slightly more tanky than the STR iteration. And last but not least, I'm not sure if you guys can guess this. Oh, of course his damage taken is, I don't wanna expose the last one, 297,745. Now, 
this last one, I checked out the list, like, I didn't look too hard deep into it, as you guys can probably tell before I started this video, but I did take a look at who the actual units were, and this one might come as a surprise to some of you, especially to global players who haven't been exposed to this man's greatness yet. <laughs> number one, the number one most tanky unit in, well, most tanky TUR, not unit overall, but TUR in Dokkan Battle right now is Hercule. Int Hercule, feistiest of the universe. Let's see. Boo Saga team, 170% defense. Average defense is 35,807. Average damage reduction is 65%. And dodge chance of 52.5%. Notes, the Boo Saga team is assumed to have an average of 70% defense HP, which gives Hercule an average of 65% damage reduction. Hercule has a 50% dodge rate from his passive. When combined with his innate 5% dodge rate to his int typing, he has a total dodge rate of 52.5%. And his damage taken is not 93,999 compared to in Janemba's 297,745. So he is significantly more tanky than like every other unit in this game, guys. Even like, like almost what, almost 300, no, 200,000 less, 200,000 less damage than the next tankiest unit. So I, I didn't see this coming, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I did not see this coming, but if you if you think about it, if you take in all these things into consideration, it does make a lot of sense, man. So, such a high chance to dodge, so much damage reduction on his passive as well. The defense is low, but um, when, you can, when you factor in the other two things, he is just not taking much damage whatsoever, right? Of course, he can't hit for crap. Like, he does not deal damage whatsoever, and um, for that reason, I mean, a lot of these other units on this list can hit, right? Like, this Android 16 can do damage, so Janemba can do damage, um, Trunks can do damage, at least a good amount. Uh, Transforming Goku can do a lot of damage. Uh, this guy can't really hit real either, but 8 Baiting can do a good amount of damage. Your Perfect Cell can do a crap load of damage. He hits extremely hard. Um, and this guy can deal damage too, so when you take that into account, yeah, these other units are probably better overall, but if you're just considering tankiness, in Turkey was number one, guys. He's the freaking champ. <laughs> Yo, we, he's been telling you. He's been telling us all along he's the champ, and now we know why. So there we go, guys. That is the list of the top 10 tanks of Dokkan Battle. Of course, like I said before, all credit goes out to Mobile Man ASC from the Dokkan subreddit for doing his calculations and making this list possible. And if you guys want to check out all the inner workings of his testing that went into determining this list, then you can go check out the original post in the comments down below. Just to recap, number 10, Super Saiyan, Physical Super Saiyan Future Gohan. Number nine, Tech Perfect Cell. Number eight, Tech Baitin. Number seven, STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. Number six, AGL Transforming Goku. Number five, Super Saiyan 3 Trunks. Number four, Tech Android 16, number 3, SDR Super Janemba, number 2, Int Super Janemba, and last but not least, we have the freaking champ, Int Hercule. Yo, there's a lot of Int units on this list, aren't there? Uh, oh, never mind, just two. Just two. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> but anyways, amazing list as always from Mobile Man. Thank you so much for providing this list and allowing me to make this video. And uh, that's all I have to say for today's video, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this list. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. And maybe I'll do more videos like this in the future as well. I had a lot of fun making it, of course. <laughs> and I hope it was a good time for you as well. That's going to do it for today's video. As always, if you guys like the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then make sure to hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And also, while you're at it, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all of my latest content. But that's all from me today, guys. Hope you have a fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.